My name's Siobhan Lindley, and I'm the CEO of Mentoring Method. Mentoring Method is a scalable technology solution for companies of all sizes that is a combination of a mentoring matching technology and algorithm compared with a learning management system. So we're calling it the world's first learning and mentoring management system. Yeah, I had to create this technology because there wasn't anything that existed that would work. Um, so today's day, mentoring programs are predominantly one-to-one. -one. And in the one-to-one -one model, I believe it's the most effective way to grow in your career. When someone can teach you something that they've done personally, it's amazing. The problem is, is that there's not a lot of diverse mentors out there because most leadership positions are held by men. <laughs> um, and so we've also found that in mentoring programs for them to be successful, it typically has to be when two people have something in common. Maybe they went to the same school or they're in the same career path or their fathers knew each other and in some way they have something in common. Well, when you are a woman or of another minority group, that really separates us from that. Um, so people, we aren't really getting selected for mentoring programs or our relationships aren't really getting off the ground as great as they should. Um, and what I discovered is that our mentoring technology platforms that exist today, they match based upon how similar people are as well. And what is the biggest obstacle you've overcome? I believe honestly it's overcoming my own lack of self-confidence which I know is really crazy to say because people look at me and they're like, she's the most confident person in the world. She's not afraid to step on the stage. Like, I am deathly afraid. I am about to hyperventilate and pass out. I'm sweating profusely, but I do it anyway. Um, but that, so on the surface, is, can look like confidence, but on the inside, I'm dying. I was very fortunate. At, at, at one time, I was the host of an ESPN radio show program. And I took one of the segments that I had and I turned it into an executive interview series because I was looking and craving female mentorship. I was in a very male dominated industry. There was no women who had made it. And I was looking for that. And so because I couldn't find mentorship inside my company, I had to look external. So I went to this radio show program and I said, let me leverage the show to get in front of executive women because I couldn't find them anywhere else. So I'm like, the ESPN name opened up every single door that I would ever want opened. And over three years, I interviewed over 150 executives, many being Fortune 1000 executive women. And I transformed as a leader because I realized every single one of us are insecure in some way. And a lot of us are very similar in, in what we're insecure about. And I learned skill after skill of how they were able to find their authentic voice. See, that's what I think what was missing for me is that I only had male examples in my life. And so when I got into my first leadership role and tried on this male style of leading, it was so inauthentic to who I was, but I didn't know that. I didn't have the awareness to realize like that was incongruent with myself. So I just thought there was something wrong with me. I thought I was terrible at leading. It, it wasn't the case. I just wasn't myself. And so it took me interviewing hundreds and hundreds of women for me to realize that there was a totally different way of leading. And when I was able to piece together hundreds of stories and try on a new way and a new voice, this almost like patch patchwork, this quilt of stories fused together until I found my own authentic voice. I help empower others by teaching them that no matter what level that you're at in your career, that you're a mentor and your story matters and it's important to share it with as many people as possible. My advice for future boss women is if things aren't moving easy or fast or quickly for you in your business, then something needs to change. Either it's the wrong thing or something needs to pivot. And if you don't know if it's the right move to make, just take one step. And if that step is easy, take the next step. I feel like we're told that if it's not hard, it's not worth it. And it's not that you're, you're 
the business isn't going to be challenging you in a lot of different ways, but it shouldn't be like hitting your head against the wall. That should be your gut instinct that something does need to shift. And um, you know, like in Friends in the episode where they're carrying the couch up the stairs and Ross is like, pivot, pivot. <laughs> like, that's what you need to do in your business. Like, just shift. And if it's easy and that step is easy, keep moving forward. And I think for me personally, I had this fear that because my business wasn't as successful as it should have been, that I had to keep trying and keep trying. And, and I kept hitting my head against the wall. And I also felt like I had put my heart and soul into my first business. And I just didn't feel like I had it in me to do it all over again, or it felt like starting all over again. And I just, I had this resistance. And ultimately what I realized was that it was me resisting who I was meant to be. And when I got over my own personal insecurity and realized I can do this, I don't need to rely on other people, I just need to take this step forward and move in this direction, and I took that step and it was easy, um, that was when things just completely transformed my career trajectory. And things have just been, it's just like, what, I got a problem? Boom, get out of my way. Boom, I got a problem. I, can, I don't feel like I'm stuck. And I don't feel that weight or that pressure anymore. And it was because I took the steps I needed to believe that I did have the solution and that I was capable and I had the confidence and that I was empowered to make a huge change in this world. And I didn't need anybody else to do it.